Boom. Done. All right. So episode two was titled Divas. Um, some odds and ends about this episode. Um, you know, I wrote it in here. We've already kind of talked about it, but I, you can, me, set episode two, you can sense the camaraderie already in the room. Can you not? Mm-hmm. Especially after the first elimination. Yeah. And the shock of it, you know, we already talked about it, but they're like, yeah. damn, that, she went home. So yeah. it's like at that, like, damn, anything can happen at this point. So it's just nice. And it's also the first season, smaller cast, it's intimate. So it, it creates a, it feels like a, more of a safe space than regular seasons, obviously. Yeah. Totally, totally. Um, another thing I just think is, I kind of mentioned this earlier, um, how emotional Carmen is. It's so funny because again, it almost kind of reminds me of myself because I'm the same way. Certain things, I can guarantee you this bitch is going to cry. If I have to talk about certain certain people, certain situations, you know, I could just, I, that's always my thing is like, oh, I would probably be a crying mess. Anytime they said anything nice. Um, I just, it, again, I feel like it makes her so endearing. It's not like, you know, she's not walking around like, well, I say that. <laughs> As I just not walking around like, oh, I'm all I'm the pretty one. She actually does. Actually, I think this is the episode, if I'm not mistaken, that she comes in the workroom with Dovima and Sagittaria as the anti-ugly busters. <laughs> um, and they're coming in and they're shooting all the ugly queens um and stuff. So, but we'll get to more of that later because it does come up again uh later. Um, but I don't know, she's just she's so endearing to me. And it's not just because I'm going to be dating Daniel soon, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and then, you know, we've already talked about poopy. Um, I just, you know, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting it. It's, it's, you know, you know, we keep saying the love and the stuff like that. And I, and it may just, again, it may be something like with um, art Simone on down under, I'm just not getting her humor. But her humor to me is not coming off as funny. It's coming off as mean. And she went for Killer, Killer Queen, like had a whole bit about how Killer Queen can't sing and Killer Queen is going to bring the team down. Killer Queen wasn't bad. Killer Queen was good in that challenge. I don't know. And she keeps going after Carmen. You know, obviously I don't like it that she's going after my girl Carmen. But... Um, and then she also made fun of Dovima for getting emotional about the Macarena's exit. Like, I just, I, I just don't feel like she's, I don't know. I, if there's anybody on the season that I feel like is doing the show to do the show and be on TV, it's her. Yeah, I think now that you say that, maybe that is true. If, and if it's not true, to me, in my perspective, like, I don't really like, she doesn't annoy me as much because I think, to me, not saying that she is, comes off as pretty insecure. Yes. And to me, I think maybe what she's doing is projecting some of her own insecurities onto the other girls. Yeah. I don't want to say that she's insecure, but that's what is coming off because, I mean, we'll talk about it. Her look this week, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, so it's more so, I, it doesn't annoy me. It's just like, it makes me feel a little bit bad for her if that's the case, you know? Yeah. like. But maybe, like you said, maybe she's doing the show to have that villain edit and stay on longer to be on TV. Um, well, they also say, and I, I, I did Google her when we um, did the first looks, and I didn't really get anything. Um, I did Google her again because they kept calling her a legend. So obviously she's been around Spain or Madrid for a long time, so she's very well known. Um, I feel like all the queens are kind of like, oh, I know who Poopy is. I know who Poopy is, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then they mentioned that she was on Spain's Got Talent. So I did go watch. Um, it's in Spanish and there was not subtitles, so I couldn't hear what was going mm -hmm. on. But I did see her performance on there and it was not good. I mean, it was very reminiscent of what we're seeing right now. So I just, my sincere hope is that we're not going to get this we're going to give her a pass because she's a name. Yeah. Um, because I feel like that's what's happening. So if I there is any right. dick in the soup, I think it's with her. Yeah. 
I will say that hopefully we have to learn about her a little bit more. Like maybe we'll see a softer side because right now we're only seeing her as that, the way the show is painting her as like that, that witty, like shady queen, you know? So maybe there's this softer side to Poopy that we could kind of like see, oh, there's a human in there, you know? <laughs> I will say, I, if anything, and to, I'm defending her, at least she's making the show a little bit more enjoyable because uh -huh. I mean, the love fest of the 13 was a little bit like gag yeah. me a little bit sometimes. Yeah. And it's like, come on, we like a little shade and drama because like I, with my siblings, are you kidding me? We fight all the time, but it's like, yeah. But yeah, so in her defense, at least she's bringing something because if it was just a love fest all, yeah. all a season, it would be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. you know and i get that and i i, I don't want to say i i think it's because you know it's it's again like i want like i i want to be able to say i love them all not i love them all except for poopy <laughs> you know what i mean like stop ruining it for me you know and they and like i i'm i'm like it's like it's we're just reminding me of art where we have to hear art's commentary on everything and I feel like no matter what happens on Espana, it's a cut to Poopy because she's funny and she's famous. We need to get her opinion on the screen. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of that. I don't know. Sorry, guys. Sorry, and I don't want to ruin her for you, Chucky Chuck, because I know you do like her. Um, and I don't want to make you second guess yourself. But um, And Hello Kitty is not um, a real fan of Poopy either, so... <laughs> Thank you, Poopy. Or thank you, Kitty. <laughs> um, all right. So the mini challenge for episode two is drag a word. Uh, it was the name of the game, drag a word. Um, and it was basically um, a scrambled letters and they had to find the, um, uh, figure out what the word Based on that, the letters yeah. that were scrambled, da, da, da. and we got to see our uh, pit crew for the first uh, one. Of, yeah, I think it was the first time we saw them all. Like they all kind of came in, and um, were a part of it. And um, they were. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I can't have Carmen, there's a few pit crew members that I'm like, hmm. I did follow them all on Instagram. Don't you worry. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, so that was the game. So they had to unscramble stuff. Um, so um, NT won the first round. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce these Spanish words that they were spelling. Basically, the, I'll, tran I'll give you the translated words that they were spelling. Uh, fever, sausage, and knee pad. Ha, ha, ha. Um, uh, NT won the first round. Poopy won the second round. And then the third round was Poopy against NT. And Poopy won the third round. Um, and so for winning, she became the team captain for the Maxi Challenge, which was two teams working separately to compose lyrics for a song where they had to sing about the importance of acting and feeling like a diva. Uh, Poopy's team was called Five and a Quarter. Whatever. Um, it was consisted of Poopy, Inti, Arancha, Dovima, and then Drag Volcano, yeah. But Drag Volcano got to choose her team because she was the last, left last mm -hmm. um, from them choosing. Uh, Ugaseo's team, he was the, uh, or, or they were the, the captain of the other team because they had won the maxi challenge the week before. And they were called the Metal Donnas. Um, it was Ugaseo, Carmen, Sagittaria, and Killer Queen. Now, do you do you know what the Metal Donnas is? No. Did you get a sense that I that you should have like I felt like I was missing out on the joke with the name of their group. Did you feel that? Probably if they well, yeah, probably. <laughs> well, I have a good friend whose husband is from Spain. So I was texting with him last night and I was like, "Hey, ask your husband um, what, um, I said, there's a, I kind of explained what happened. They picked this name, Metal Donna's. Does it mean something? Da, da, da. Um, this, he said, this is, this is what he thought of. He said, it's a stretch, but they called it Metal Donna's because it sounds like the Spanish word metadona, mm -hmm. which means methadone 
which is our, our narcotic similar to morphine. Um, mm. I don't know. He also thought that maybe it, because it sounded like Madonna. I mean, okay. if somebody knows the reason, I don't know. Like, I just well, felt like I was missing out on like, why is, why is this so funny? Why did they think this was such a great name for the, cause they seemed like this is a great name. You know what I mean? Like that seems makes sense if it's coming that's killer queen's team right so i mean doctor yeah. morphine oh maybe, that could be maybe the madonna reference as well that makes yeah. sense yeah i mean i think it was sagittaria though that thought of it i don't get the five in the quarter though <laughs> what's well, that there were five of them and because drag volcano was tall that's why five and a quarter oh. because she's taller yeah okay that was <laughs> okay now yeah. all right yeah. <laughs> well, please, if somebody's watching this later and you know what, why Metal Donna's was so exciting, please, please, please write it in the comments on YouTube or um, wherever you're seeing this. Um, or if you're watching live now and you hear this, um, let me know. Um, all right. So the um, we're going to talk about the um, their performances and runways together because um, that's how they got judged. Um, uh, so again, Anna Locking, Javier Ambrosi, Ali's new soon-to-be husband, Javier Calvo. Um, and guest judge was Paca La Piranha, Piranha uh, who Ali obviously knows. He's shaking his head. Uh, she is from Breakout Star from Veneno, Veneno on HBO Max. And I guess I was reading about her. She now has a spinoff show <gasps> because she was such a big... She does. That's a it's um and it's something I don't know that it's on HBO Max, but I think it's like she gives advice or something. Oh I'm gonna see if I can find it while okay. we're while we're I, uh, going through these. Cause she's so funny. She's in the yeah. show Love and I don't like. She is literally the breakout star, as you said. She you wait for her to come back. She's not like the biggest character in that, but she plays mm -hmm. a pretty pretty big role in it. You just cannot help but laugh every single time with her so, one-liners. Will you do me a favor? I just thought, because you watch Ven L Veneno. La Veneno? You've seen it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell me, because I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I know it's about Christina, correct? Mm -hmm. um, tell me, tell us of all who don't know what it is, what it is, what it's about, please. It's about like the sex icon, Christina Ortiz Rodriguez, who is this trans superstar. She was a singer, dancer back in the, I forget if it was the eighties or the nineties, but she was a huge trailblazer in the trans community. In, um, uh, and she just kind of like really revolutionized what it is to be trans. And it, it, the story and the way they like pace it is very all over the place. So it goes from past and present. It's mm. also there's, um, uh, another main character who isn't Christina, her experience as a trans woman and transitioning and how Christina uh, inspired her. And so you kind of go through the life of her as well as Christina and showing kind of how they, the juxtaposition between the two characters, the trans women and what Christina had to go through. Like she's been through some crazy, crazy shit, you know, wow. abuse, drugs, there, it's just so much and I don't want to give away too much because it is such an amazing show that I recommend. I can't recommend it enough and to watch it with subtitles because of, there is like an English, if you, if you can't do subtitles, do the English uh, voiceover, but oh. I'm kind of all over the place with the explanation of it, but it was, it was just a real, it's such an important show that I think everyone should watch. What is Veneno? Hmm? What is Veneno? That was like her name as like what she was known as because she became a television star and that's what she, that was her like um, kind of like her star name her title name. Oh, okay. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that makes but sense. But please go watch it. Okay. I mean, I I keep debating whether to get HBO Max. I just have so many things that I'm like, oh, another one. But um, I, I'm wanting HBO Max more and more every time because there's all these good things. I'm sure there's a um, free trial. Free trial, binge it, cancel the free trial. <laughs> um, oh, wait, what does Gabe say here? Hold on. Gabe says, um, as a multilingual person, I definitely love watching without subtitles first, then rewatch and see how accurately it's subtitled. <laughs> are you referring to uh, Drag Race España or are you talking about Veneno on HBO? I'm just curious, um, Gabe. Um, 
There's a lot on YouTube. Oh, okay, there's a lot on YouTube about her, uh, a disco queen says. Uh, and veneno means poison. Thank you, Luis Manuel Hernandez Elias. You know, I love saying your name. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chucky, for asking Luis. Maybe Luis knows what the uh, Metal Donna was in reference to of the team name, um, since we've got Luis in the room. Um, all right. So, um, runway and performance, uh, tops and bottoms. Again, we're only going to do tops and bottoms. This, um, and the runway theme was a tribute to La Veneno. Um, all right. So first up is, um, although she, I don't know why I'm, I, I just listed her first, but, um, uh, first one we're going to show is Carmen. Um, here's Carmen's look. She came out in a red cape and then revealed, uh, this look. Ollie. <laughs> iconic literally i think she killed it i she totally embodied it was literally what the challenge was all about and you still see carmen obviously but i'm like damn carmen looks so much like christina oh but really like, and i love that like she was in judging she was holding her hand up the entire time they're like you could put your hand down and she's like no i'm fine um but it was so good. It was, I loved like the Adam and Eve symbolism with mm -hmm. the snake, obviously the forbidden fruit. Yeah. So good. I mean, she's, I, uh, she's not relying on that body. I know that's, no. kind of, that's like the common critique of the body queens or whatever, but yeah. like she killed it. I mean, yes, she's showing her body in the challenge, but it's in, not in the typical way like Courtney Act. I'm just going to come out in a bathing suit and a, a big wig, you know? Um, oh, ladies and gentlemen, our next host, <gasps> Winston Montgomery. Oh, hello, He's Winston. coming to say hello to everybody. Say hi to everybody. When you, oops, oh, I love you too, buddy. Uh, he just, is, it's getting close to there, you know, D-I-N-N-E-R. So I got to, you know. Anyway, um, so that was, that was our Carmen. Yeah, she's just um, oh, and uh, now they're saying venom um, is, uh, or veneno, venom is the translation for, which then would make the snake even more, you know, significant, I think. Did you know that? What? V venom? La no. veneno? Oh, okay. but it makes sense because law is like the feminine version, so she's poison. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> as opposed to Anita Wiglet's Eve. <laughs> Who said that, Rex? <laughs> How dare you bring up? We're trying to forget about Down Under. Um, all right. So next up, ugh, again, I'm gonna let you talk because I just don't want to even talk about her. Um, is um, shitty, I mean, poopy. Um, your thoughts, Ali, right. on? <laughs> it read more Shania Twain, <laughs> like I feel like a woman rather than Christina. <laughs> uh, I just love that, you know, poopy, she talks so much shit, but yet she comes out like this. <laughs> so like, I can't even be mad. You know, I was surprised that she was kind of wasn't she in the top, kind of? Yes. It was her yeah. and Carmen in the top. This. I mean, I, th I think she did good in the challenge, no lie. Yeah. I think she she did good, but, like, this yeah. was just, like, I think it definitely evened out, like, nope, you're not winning. Because <laughs> yeah. I just felt like if this was totally, like, Shania Twain, damn, I feel like a woman. That's totally. Or no, 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 not Shania Twain. No, it's, it's um, um, uh, uh that don't impress me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got to uh, mix yeah, it up. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Uh, Rex, Rex Trek, what are you, who are you talking? Who are, I'm not sure who you're referring to, uh, Rex Trek. She bugs me too. Why does she bug you? Um, I'm not sure who you're referring to. I'm um, maybe poopy. Um, yeah, I, I, I think she, I think, and that's what I think it was. I think she did okay in the challenge. And so they, in the, performance and then they mm -hmm. so they put her in the top for that but no um and this is where i'm gonna and i'll talk and i'm gonna get into something later where i think maybe one of the one of the first appearances of dick in the soup in regards to poopy but i'll get to it in just a second 
Um, all right. So next on the runway, and this is uh, bottom, is um, Arancha Castilla. Arancha Castilla La Mancha. Um, here's her um, tribute to La Veneno. Hey, she might not be a bottom. She could be verse or top. <laughs> um, yeah, this was the, honestly, this is my girl, but this is like the worst week. Wor worst, can't even talk, look of the week. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, I have to say it. This is my girl. This is my favorite, but like it didn't read Christina. I agree with the judging. It was yeah. so unfortunate because I'm like, oh, girl, like, come on. I love you. Yeah. But I think it just didn't, I didn't see it, you know? I just didn't see it. I didn't see the 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 reference. I didn't yeah. see the the influence of Christina, unfortunately. So I understand where the judges were coming from. Yeah, and it's sad. I was like, no, Arancha. I know. I did the same thing, and I get I get the idea. What when she explained it, what she was going for it was more like this. It I'm letting her influence my choice of drag, which I don't mind that. But you just didn't get. And you, because you know the show and you know who this person is, mm -hmm. the fact that you're saying that makes me go, okay, at least I was, I feel okay feeling the way that I was feeling about it, not knowing anything about who she was. So, um, uh, yeah, th that's true, Chucky Chuck. Good point. This is like um, uh, the US runway, Night of a Thousand Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wouldn't be surprised if they did this like that, did it again because she's probably that popular there that they probably could get away with doing it again. Um, all right, next on the runway is Drag Volcano. Uh, let me grab her picture for you, Ali. Uh, Drag Volcano as her um, tribute to La Veneno. It really was beautiful. Gorgeous. Like, you can't deny that this was like <laughs> so yeah. flippin' like, gush, god darn, that looks like a walking statue. Yeah. Uh, I loved the, like, when you stayed up close, there's so much detail, so much intricacy of, like, seeing the multiple different pictures of Love and Christina, like, just throughout her, the eras, different eras of her, like, it was, like, a shrine. Like, she was literally yeah. a walking shrine in those platform shoes. Like, yeah. oh, my goodness. Um, so it was crazy to see her in the bottom, but I think I understand why she was in the bottom because of the I, performance. Um, of the performance. And I also like, I feel like we haven't talked about her a whole lot so far. So she isn't giving a whole lot to like the cameras. And I don't know, you need to like, if you want to, I don't know, maybe that's producing coming up all, all of a sudden, but mm -hmm. she's a little forgettable, but like, I loved her look. It was beautiful. Yeah, they definitely, and they've talked about it, um, that she just, you know, she, there's a point early in the episode where she says something uh, when they're choosing the teams and they're like, Oh, she can talk, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, I don't, right. I don't necessarily hold it against somebody who is not a big personality. Um, I'm not going to dump, but you do kind of have to find a way to stand out then. Um, I mean, I definitely think her looks make her stand out. Right. So I was, I was a little, I was a little shocked because this was one of the most beautiful things I think I've ever seen. I mean, it was just so meticulous. And I thought there was a part of me that felt like she did have a little bit of a right to be upset. Um, but again, it, I think it was because of her performance. Um, I'm curious if she didn't wear the platforms for the performance, if she would have been in the bottom. Yeah. Just my, just a thought, just a thought. Um, all right, and last but not least is Inti for the runway. Uh, let me grab her picture in T, runway two, there it is. All right, here you go, Ali. Oh, yes, and this was, I was like, oh my, why did I forget about her? Mm -hmm. She was amazing. Yeah. It was uh, But in the bottom, but in the bottom. Right, but it was beautiful regardless. But I thought she was, I thought she was gonna be in the bottom with Arancha, actually. Mm -hmm. I think that's where my shot came into this episode, but it wasn't like a bad thing. I wasn't like, ah. Oh, but I loved her look. Yeah. And I think, well, I'm sure we'll talk about it later. Like, Inti had, like, a really good episode, yeah. story in this episode. But definitely, yeah. I think this was a good interpretation of Christina because you also saw Inti at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it was a perfect blend, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, again, I'm just going off of what I hear them talking. 
you know, based on the episodes and stuff like that. So I seeing that was like, okay, I, I feel like this is a- accurate. So again, I think she was in the bottom for performance. Um, I will say something. I was a little bit bummed that there wasn't another person on stage because it was only five of them and usually mm-hmm. it's six. So yeah. I was like, oh, I want someone else to be critique. So there would be three bottoms, three tops. Well, let me, let me point something out, which I don't know if you caught. Um, and this is what I was going to mention earlier, a little dick in the soup. Um, Carmen won and her other teammates were all safe. So why didn't Ugaseo's team just win the team challenge mm. and then the other team would be in the bottom? I mean, it, literally, Carmen won and everybody else was safe. So that could have been the winning team. And they were 10 times better than the other team. Lyrics yeah. were better. Their their look seemed a lot more cohesive. I think a lot of it had to do with, again, with Drag Volcano being so tall. Mm-hmm. But um, they were hands down the better team. So they yeah. should have won and walked off the stage. And it should have been kept at the bottom. This is where I think it's a little dick in the soup. Because I feel like they did this to put Poopy in the top again. Because it was only Poopy and Carmen in the top. Right. So that's my little dick in the soup opinion. Very interesting. I will say that it was there were some like weak, link, weak links in some in like both teams. Yeah. So it did make it like a little awkward judging. Like our one critique our one bad critique of the episode. Oh. Yeah. But um regardless, like it didn't make me upset, but um, yeah. That's interesting. That's an interesting theory. I yeah. can see it though. Just, I can just see putting it out there because that's what we're here to do. Um, so they did ask um, Paka, the guest judge, who looks the most like Christina. And she said Inti and Carmen uh, was, because she's, and, and I don't know if you said this, Paka is, was actually friends with Christina, the real Christina. Mm-hmm. In real life. So mm-hmm. um, uh, that's why they were asking her. Um, oh, I said that. Okay, so it was my, my, my theory of the dick in the soup was my next thing. All right, so Carmen ended up winning. Thank God. Uh, well-deserved. <laughs> I mean, her performance and her runway were hands on the best. Uh, the lip sync was between Drag Volcano and Arancha Castilla Mancha. Um, I don't think it was the correct bottom two. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like you, I think Inti probably should have been there. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I, I thought, I thought Drag Volcano got a little bit of a bum, bum deal. Yeah. Um, I feel bad, but also like, uh, again, I don't because I also love Inti and Arancha. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, maybe this was some dick in the soup. Well, you know, the other thing, and somebody mentioned this in the chat. Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember where it was. But um, somebody said, so Drag Volcano also has a moment in this at the end of the episode where she talks about how the judges told her that she should take off the platforms and wear regular shoes like everybody else. And then she makes a comment, well, why don't they have to wear platform shoes? Like, why, why does it have to be me coming down off of the platforms? Why can't it be them coming up on platforms and trying to do what I do? Um, and I definitely, you know, I, I feel your pain with that a thousand percent. Um, uh, but in a little bit of a defense in episode one, the judges, when they were deliberating, do say Carmen needs to show more versatility that if she's just going to do Versace and that kind of stuff, she's not going to make it. And they actually say the same thing about Ugaseo. Mm. And the first challenge and the first um, episode. Yeah. That and I'm if sure he that he keeps doing that, you know, that he's going to have, it's going to be hard for him to continue on. Right. And I'm sure so I like, will. Yeah. No, um, I see. I like that you brought that up because it is really, it's there. Like, I, and I'm pretty sure they want Arancha to be more, like, a little bit more polished, you know, keep, keep who you are. But, like, Ella, I mean, she was in the bottom because of her look and her performance, probably. But the look was. Yeah the worst of the week. So I'm pretty sure they want like versatility, like you're saying from multiple yeah. Queens poopy girl. Speaking of being polished, come on. <laughs> right. Girl, somebody in the comments also was talking about how horrible her makeup is. And it is, it's so bad. 
It's, I mean, she's literally like when she, there's a, a part where they show her taking off her eyelashes and they're literally like CVS eyelashes. Those weren't bat me lashes. Those were not velvet bat me <laughs> lashes that I will be wearing on Sunday at Beaches West Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And sometimes I even double stack velvet lashes. Thank you very much. So just so y'all know. Um, all right. Mirror Moments, episode two. Uh, we were mentioning this This camp, camp earlier. You were saying Inti had a very um, emotional um, episode. Um, and she talked a lot about Christina's influence on her, how she lived in the neighborhood with her, and that Christina actually spoke to her and told her, like, how to deal with transitioning and stuff like that. I just thought it was such a cool mm-hmm. tie-in. You know, right. to the episode, I mean, whether it was planned or not. I mean, I was a sucker. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. I thought that was such a beautiful moment. And that's when I was like, oh, Inti, I love you so much. And like yeah. the fact that like, I just loved her like quick little statement. It was like the most simplest thing that she yeah. said. She's such a quiet person. But like she said that like, you don't need a piece of paper to be trans. You don't need hormones to be trans. You know who you are. Like that's no one's going to tell you different. And I love those mm-hmm. conversations. It's si- the simplest thing that some people just don't comprehend. And it's very unfortunate. But if people continue to, to support that and say that and put it out there on this huge platform, people will finally, hopefully yeah. understand and learn and be open to learning about people that are on the binary, you know, typically Absolutely. male and Absolutely. female. Yeah. Um, I love also- you, Indeed. <laughs> I know, I know, and, and, and she was another one. We when we did the the uh, first looks that we kind of were a little harsh on her yes. look because it looked a little thrown together. And um, again, you know, we're the first to admit when we've made mistakes and stuff like that. Um, but um, again, this is what I say all the time. Like, I can forget about a ripped hem or a hole in their pantyhose, if I am entertained, if I have an emotional connection to what you're doing and what you're trying to do, I'm not going to pay attention to any of that. Um, It's the reverse that never happens. You're never like, oh, I like you because of your rhinestones. No, girl, no. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not, you don't get it. I don't know. Um, Also, and this was I talked about earlier, there's a moment where Davima has that, oh, that conversation she has with Inti was so intense to me. Like just how she was talking to Inti and was just like, like looking her right in the eye and saying all this stuff. And at the end, when she, she, when she calls her divine, she's like, you are divine. She says it like twice. You are divine. You are divine. And then killer says, and you're brave. Like, I don't know. Like it was just this moment where you were just like, like, ah, That's what I was talking about earlier about episode two. There was so much camaraderie and love in this episode. I just, Mm. I really loved it. I really, really, truly loved it. Agreed. I couldn't, I can't agree enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, My quote of this episode goes to Paka. Uh, Here I am, celebrated, venerated, and poorly penetrated. (laughs) (laughs) We in, we have that in common, Paka. Right? I was going to say, well, Paka, I want that on my tombstone. 